Hey guys, this is going to wrap up my four-part early prediction series going through state by state, taking a look at Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, as well as South Carolina, and just giving my thoughts into how I think things might play out in the coming weeks as we get closer to the votes that are going to be cast in these key early states. Now, out of all of the four early states, I think South Carolina is probably the most straightforward one to predict at this point in time. And if you're interested in looking at my other early prediction videos that I've already touched on with Iowa, New Hampshire, as well as Nevada, you can check those out down in the video description. So I want to just jump right in here and talk about South Carolina. I don't think there's anything that Joe Biden could do at this point in time heading up to South Carolina that would make him not get first place in the state. This is likely to be his bread and butter type scenario, kind of like what we saw from Hillary Clinton back in 2016, where she absolutely cleaned house in those southeastern states. Joe Biden likely to do very well among that sim similar voter demographic, kind of your white conservative type Democrats, as well as the African-American vote, two key voting blocks for Biden. We see this in poll after poll where Joe Biden is showing a lot of strength in South Carolina. Now, we did get what many would probably consider a gaffe from Biden just the other day where he answered a question. He was asked, would he consider picking a Republican to be his vice presidential nominee? And he said very straightforward, yes, that he would consider this. Now, I think that at least taking an overall bigger picture look at this, let's just say there was a Republican primary going on for them picking their nominee for the president. If the Republican frontrunner were to say that they would pick a Democratic vice presidential candidate to run with or even consider it, I think that would probably tank that particular candidate's opportunity to go on and win on the Republican side. I think that they would sink like a stone in the polls, but I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case for Biden because the part of the Democratic electorate that would be most offended by him perhaps picking a Republican to be his vice presidential candidate along with him on top of the ticket, I don't think those are the types of voters that are supporting Biden anyways. He has a more older age demographic, kind of people who still think of politics more so like we're back in the 90s where you had Bill Clinton, who was more of a conservative Democrat, and he often worked with Republicans, and there was a lot more working in between the parties for a number of decades, more so recently, it's been very partisan and divided. But these types of older voters still see things in a way where it's a bit less partisan in nature. So I don't think that Biden's necessarily going to lose that type of voter demographic that's supporting him. Perhaps it maybe nicks him a little bit with the African-American vote, but we'll have to see if that's going to be the case or not for Biden longer term after we kind of get the polls coming out in the coming weeks, see if it has any kind of an effect. But even if Biden isn't performing well out of the gate in states like Iowa, New Hampshire, or even Nevada, at the end of the day, I still see him performing quite well in South Carolina. And it might be exactly what the Biden campaign needs to have something positive to build off of before turning the calendar over to March, heading in to the all-important Super Tuesday. And another very straightforward prediction for South Carolina is Buttigieg coming in at the back end here in fourth place. He does very poorly with African-American voters, which is a key voter block in South Carolina. He might do okay with some of the white voters in South Carolina, but I think he's going to get fourth and by a rather distant margin again, more so leveraged by the fact that he's likely to do very poorly among those African-American voters that are going to be participating in that primary. And then that just leaves us Elizabeth Warren as well as Bernie Sanders. And I think Sanders is likely to have a lot of success in those first three states, given how it lines up very well for him with the caucuses in Iowa and Nevada. Now, it's an open caucus in Iowa, which should really give him an even better benefit than what is a closed caucus in Nevada, which could make things a little bit tougher for Sanders, but still a caucus. And that's where Sanders and his type of voter is, in general, likely to do a bit better than what we're getting in a lot of these primaries. And then, of course, New Hampshire is likely to be a very strong state for Bernie Sanders. It's neighboring to Vermont, where he is the senator from, and he did very well in the state in 2016. So things are lining up well for Sanders out of the gate, and I think he can parlay that positive momentum into coming in a decent second place here in South Carolina. And I think it's Elizabeth Warren coming in third place. Now, the question is going to be, 
can Sanders and Warren eclipse the 15 percentage point threshold of support to be part of the individuals that divvy up those pledged delegates from the state of South Carolina? It's going to be important for them to do that, to try to diminish the type of margin of victory that Biden might be able to pick up in the state otherwise if some of these other candidates aren't able to eclipse that 15 percentage point threshold. I think Sanders has a really good shot at eclipsing, at least getting to that 15 percent number. He probably does even a little bit better than that, whereas Warren, I think, would have just a little bit tougher of a time going on in reaching that point. But actually, what's really interesting about Sanders, he often overperformed and rather quite significantly so. What a lot of the polls were saying in a number of states in 2016 in his head-to-head matchup against Hillary Clinton. But actually, in South Carolina, he was not polling very well against Clinton, and he actually significantly underperformed even what those relatively low polling numbers were saying out of him in South Carolina. So that is also something to possibly keep in mind in this scenario. But that's going to wrap this one up, guys. Again, this is just my early predictions, not my final predictions. I'm going to make those as we get much closer to when people are actually going to vote as we continue to get more polling data, as well as some other things that are likely to happen in the coming weeks that could possibly shift things around a bit. And again, if you want to check out all the other videos that I made talking about these other states that are going to be opening here through the month of February, I'll link those down at the Uh, video description going to be at the top of that video description if you want to check those out so i appreciate you guys stopping by consider subscribing to the youtube channel and i hope to see you guys back here for future videos